are. Cranley is urging people to explore the great outdoors. We have beautiful trails. We have beautiful parks. Obviously, if it's raining, you know, people can figure that out. But the bottom line is people need exercise, and uh, we're not saying don't go outside. We're just saying keep social distance uh, as, as you do so. One restroom in each Cincinnati park will open early and stay open as a place for hygiene. Wash your hands, that kind of thing. So you'll have to get ex exercise outdoors since the governor of Ohio also ordered all gyms and fitness centers to close their doors today. Recreation centers and bowling alleys are being closed as well, plus indoor water parks and trampoline parks. Even movie theaters are shutting down. However, the order still excludes malls. Governor DeWine says malls with exterior entrances are able to stay open at this time. Today, the Hamilton County Board of Health ordered the Northgate and Kenwood malls to close, but then rescinded that order just a few hours later. Flying Pig Runners, you have a few extra months to train because a huge Cincinnati Marathon will be pushed from early May to October 9th through the 11th. Each year, more than 50,000 runners and volunteers take part. Restaurants and bars in Kentucky and Indiana are now only offering pickup or delivery food following Ohio's lead yesterday. Marielle Carbone spoke to local shops in northern Kentucky and shows us how they will still try to offer service. Well, today's news didn't come too surprising to a lot of local restaurant owners that I spoke to. They tell me that they're prepared and ready to ramp up their curbside as well as delivery options to keep business moving forward. Business is changing. And we have seen less people coming in, lots of carry out. As people worry about the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. People are worried that even if they're not sick, that they'll infect other people. And now a Kentucky order that prevents all dine-in at restaurants as local businesses changing their tune. Our wait staff jumped up and said, hey, if there's anything we can do to make sure that we, um, you know, get food to people and we're willing to work. For sisters Angela and Susanna Wong, the owners of Oriental Walk in Fort Mitchell, they're bracing for an increase in carryout and curbside pickup. Uh, we're ready to take your orders so you can take it home. In Covington, businesses are getting creative. We're going to make an attempt to maybe repurpose some of our servers, use them as delivery drivers. Um, where possible. At the Groff, staff is pushing its drive through window, expanding deli options and heat and eat meals. I'm going to tell them just go ahead and double park and we'll run it out to you. And Old Town Cafe says they'll bring food to your car. But these solutions, they won't solve all problems and the impact. Oh, it's going to be big. You can only do so much carry out. Cafe owner Frank Bonfilio is hoping people still support local spots, which he says is essential to the livelihood of servers all across the tri-state. They live off their tips. There is no tips. Hopefully people doing pickups will maybe leave a little bit here and there. But And bottom line, most restaurant owners I spoke to today tell me that it is vital that people continue to support local businesses here because if not, those restaurants you love to go to may not be here after the next few weeks are over. Reporting in Fort Mitchell, Marielle Carbone, WCPO 9 News. Marielle, thank you. The coronavirus story changes by the minute. For the latest information on the virus, just head to our website, WCPO.com, and click on, do you see that coronavirus tab at the top of the screen, that red arrow pointing at it? Click on that. More ahead on WCPO 9 News at 6, including what happened when former city council member Tamaya Denard went before a judge today. Plus, A.J. Green has a clearer future, where you will see the Bengals receiver play next season is coming up. It's sports. Former City Councilwoman Tamaya Denard pleaded not guilty to public corruption charges today in federal court. Denard didn't comment as she left court today with her mother and brother after a brief hearing before a federal magistrate. Denard was indicted on charges of honest services, wire fraud, bribery and attempted extortion. Prosecutors accuse her of trying to trade her votes for money. Denard, who was council president pro tem, was first arrested on February 25th. She resigned her council seat March 2nd. A fight between two customers at Traders World Flea Market in Monroe left one person injured and another in custody. That incident happened yesterday about 2 p.m. and police say it was isolated between the two people, which ended in the shooting. Traffic was stopped in the area of the market during the investigation. We here at WCPO 9 News are working to learn more about the victim's condition and what led to that fight. Cincinnati police have identified the person killed during a triple shooting in Avondale yesterday. Police say 25 year old Delmaris White died at the intersection of Perkins and Ridgeway. Two other victims are now at UC Medical Center. The investigation and search for suspects is ongoing.
Raven. All right, so we are looking at some rain into our forecast, but we do get a little bit of a break from the rain. We'll tell you that plus temperatures are warming up. We'll give you those details coming up. Police say tri-state sex offenders sometimes give them the wrong home address and they can't do anything about it. Ahead, how a new law could change that. About 2,300 registered sex offenders live in the Cincinnati area. Sex offender registry shows some of the homeless offenders live on public property near playgrounds, libraries, and schools. The WCPO 99 team wanted to know how that happened and what can be done to address it. Chief investigative reporter Craig Cheatham shows why our investigation is prompting demands for reform. Well, you'd be surprised how many sex offenders there are. Corporal Ed Schinkel of the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office is verifying home addresses registered by convicted sex offenders. It's our way of keeping a little bit better track of them. This outdoor park shelter next to a playground is the home address registered by homeless sex offender Brian Triblett. By law, we cannot deny any address that they give us. We have to accept it. The Ohio Sex Offender Registry also shows the front steps of public library in Coryville is the home address of convicted child molester Douglas Day. The registry classifies Day as a sexual predator. Day and Triblett are among 70 sex offenders in seven Cincinnati area counties, identified as non-compliant on state registries because they failed to verify their addresses or other violations. Police are looking for them. Do you have a photo ID with you? Ohio law requires sheriff's offices to register sex offenders, but Ohio sheriffs are not required to verify the offenders live there. But Hamilton County Sheriff Jim Neal does it anyway. That's something we feel strongly about, that if we're going to register them, let's confirm and verify that they're living where they say they're living. And we have a lot of kids that, that play out here. Daryl Williamson lives across the street from the park Triplett calls home. We're not doing our job. If that's the law, that you just have to register a random address. It's legal, but it's laughable. Ohio State Senator Cecil Thomas said Ohio law should require sheriffs to verify sex offenders' addresses, provide funding for it, and create more shelter space for sex offenders. We can't just turn our backs and say, well, you're homeless now, so what? You, you, you going back to jail or are we going to or you better find an address. Court records show Triblett and Day have each been repeatedly charged with failing to verify their addresses, a felony. After they violated community-based programs, judges sentenced them to jail or prison. Third and final notice. Last week, Schinkel posted the third notification for Triblett to verify this is his home address. Schinkel says Triblett wanted the notices posted here. February 7th. February 24th, and now it's March 2nd, and still no response. Triblett had 72 hours to return the card to the sheriff's office, but he didn't. A Hamilton County grand jury indicted Triblett. A warrant has been issued for his arrest. The I-Team has compiled a list of all non-compliant sex offenders believed to be at large in Southwest Ohio and Northern Kentucky. You can see who they are and where they are supposedly living and how to contact law enforcement by going right now to WCPO.com.